Hello, my name is Danny Okunani and I'm an inventor for the Genspiration Prize Competition. When I was in community college, we did research on Hallbach arrays to see if we could increase the efficiency of certain systems for maglev. Hallbach arrays are essentially just magnets which are spaced to one another through 90 degree associations. In short, these associations, when they are arranged correctly, cause what's called the block wall of the magnet to be shifted so that way you have the cancellation of forces on one side and you have a really strong magnetic field on the other. The cancellation of these magnetic forces into one direction got me thinking, what if we could do the same thing with masses so that we could have a single vector of force? My hypothesis was pretty straightforward. First, I would need to figure out a way to have a constant force of acceleration. Then I had to ensure that the force could be not only sustained for a long period of time, but that it was relatively constant. After doing a bit of research, I discovered that I could exploit centripetal and centrifugal forces using a geared disc with a mass. Now I've come to term these devices as artificial gyroscopes, and really they're not exclusive to mechanical devices. They are also descriptions for more nuanced things in particle physics, but their principle of operation is not too dissimilar from the Hallbach arrays. So here's how the devices work in principle. Essentially, I take a series of discs which each carry a heavy mass, and the heavy mass in almost every case I've used is tungsten because it's cheap and it's very heavy. These discs are arranged so that way the masses can travel along a certain path where when you sum up all of the forces, there is a cancellation that occurs just like the Hallbach array. The idea is to make sure that their tangential vectors, that is the paths they normally want to travel if they were just released, are preserved, and that when they're all added up together, you get an unbalanced force. Now it's important to note that this system is a multi-particle system, and therefore the center of mass won't be directly in the center of the object. In fact, when the machine starts to operate, the center of mass experiences a displacement that causes it to move in a single vector of force. Using the Python code, I was able to verify that when the system is operational, the true center of mass does become displaced, and in addition to this, energy is conserved and we see a constant line of work that's being done on the system with respect to its center of mass, with a constant impulse all according to basic equations of classical mechanics. All of this checks out as one might expect because a given device is powered by an electric or gas-powered motor which sources rotations of energy. Now this energy is transferred to the disk and the disk have angular acceleration and deacceleration which is ultimately transferred into linear acceleration in one particular direction. Now, if you take a look at the preliminary demonstration for a resin based model I built, there isn't too much that can be said about the apparent burst of force which come out from the model. And that's just because this is done in an uncontrolled environment, so it's really hard to say what's going on other than my hand is trying to keep it tethered because the thing is trying to move someplace. You'll also notice that there's smoke coming out of the system because, well, resin isn't the best material to use for handling gears moving at a high speed. Um, they don't handle heat transfer well, so I did end up moving to metal parts, cheaper metal parts namely aluminum. Final closing remarks are just that this particular device, in effect, functions as a propellantless rocket engine. That means that there's no combustion process, so there's no loud boom. So that means there's nothing being released into the atmosphere. The only thing you have to worry about is the type of power source you're using. Secondly, the manufacturing costs are extremely low because the primary materials are just tungsten and aluminum, which are fairly cheap, and they can all be automated in terms of machining.